and my name's John and I'm a human doing. And what am I doing today? I built a tablet mount for the back of our car so that our kids can watch movies, play video games, listen to music on their own when we're on long trips and they need something to keep themselves occupied. And as you can see, the tablet mounted in the car. This is going to be fun, I think, for them on long trips. Uh, there will be wireless headphones connected as well as a wireless remote control so that they can play video games. So it's a fun one. Now, the one thing I'm not going to be showing in this video is how to make the insert for the, the tablet itself. And that's just because I did my iPad wall mount video uh, earlier on and the process is identical. So to get started on this project, the first thing I did was build a picture frame for the insert to fit in. And the reason I did it that way was so that if I did want to change the tablet to a different brand or a different make, um, all I would have to do is change the insert instead of having to remake the entire cabinet. So this I thought was a, a logical means of doing it and uh, the picture frame itself was what I started with. So you can see here the picture frame is just sort of a, it's a three quarter inch MDF but it, I cut it into like an L shape and it allows the, the insert to fit inside. So the chop saw is doing the bulk of the work here. It's just 45 degree angles. Like I said, this is just a picture frame. So four pieces and that's all I need to do to finish it. And I'm using the the tablet mount itself just to do a, a quick check to make sure that it's a, it's the correct fit. I don't want it to be a really tight fit. I want it to, do, to be maybe a 64th uh, or a little more big so that the the insert can can pull in and, and go out as needed because it won't be fastened in with by any means it's just going to be uh, a friction fit. Now one little trick I use when I'm doing or when I'm making a picture frame or anything that's like a picture frame is I mount all my pieces to a piece of tape make sure making sure that the pieces are nice and tight against each other and then once you're finished that you put in your glue and then you just sort of fold it together and it comes together almost like uh, like origami or something it, it goes together quite well and the tape is more than strong enough for a, something as small as this so this is a uh, super easy way to you know to put together your picture frame so just wait for your glue to dry and you can see here I, I am just using an eighth inch router bit and this is just to give it uh, a bit of a profile I don't want any sharp edges on this of course it's going to be handled uh, fairly regularly now you can see the size of the project, which is the next step uh, that I chose to do. And uh, the sides, the front and back, are both curved. And, and there's no specific radius. You, you know, I, I decided to use, I just wanted to use something that was aesthetically pleasing. So I chose to use my uh, curve jig, which is really just a quarter inch piece of maple with a string attached to the other end. It looks like a bow and arrow, depending on how tight you make it. Uh, and the tighter you pull the string, the tighter the radius is. So you can see I'm just picking radiuses for the front and the back. And again, there's no rhyme or reason to it. I just chose what I thought was aesthetically pleasing. So one thing I should note is you only have to draw your curves on one side. When you're doing a project like this, it's easier to make one look the way you want it to, as I'm cutting it out on the bandsaw here. And that way you can copy it so that the, your left and right side are identical. So I'm sanding this edge here, but again, I'm only going to be doing one of these two pieces, and that way I can make a copy of it. And this is the beginning of that copying stage. I'm just putting two-way tape on the one piece that I just finished, and I'm going to be pressing it onto the side that hasn't been cut yet. So I just want to make sure that I push really hard, make sure that that, that tape sticks, and then I can take that over back over to the to the bandsaw, and I'm cutting this material now. You don't have to cut it right up against your, I'll, I'll call it your initial or your, or your first piece. You just want to give yourself like a sixteenth of an inch, an eighth of an inch, even a quarter inch would be fine. You're just trying to make it easier for your router to take the material off and you're trying to minimize the amount of dust. So I'm just making sure I'm cutting relatively close and then I've got a copying bit here. It's just a, a top bearing. So you run it along and you're going to get an identical second side. So that way both your sides are identical and you don't have to worry about mismatch, uh, well anything, everything will align properly. So with both sides completed, I can fasten them to the base, which is just a piece of three quarter inch MDF, and they're fastened with carpenter's glue and five eighths brad nails. The, the glue does the bulk of the work, but the brad nails are going to hold them there until that glue dries. So once those sides are secure and fastened, it's time to move to the back of this project. And because the center console in this car is curved, 
I also want to curve the back of my project to give me the most amount of space. Uh, the space is going to be used for wireless headphones and remote controls for video games. So I want to have as much space as I can back there. And the way uh, I curve MDF is by curfing it. That's curf with a K, K-E-R-F. And a curf, if you're not familiar with woodworking, is just uh, the curf is what, what you remove from the material, the saw blade amount. That's called a curf. So I'm removing, or I'm using a blade that's a quarter inch wide, and I'm leaving a quarter inch space in between each one of those cuts. I should also note that when you're cutting, at least when you're doing this, you're leaving almost nothing left of the material. Uh, so it's almost cutting all the way through. In my case, it's a little bit less than a sixteenth of an inch remaining of that material. And you can see I'm fastening it here with brad nails. Uh, I do mostly on the bottom and a few on the side. But you can see how flexible it is. It's extremely flexible, but it's also very brittle. So if you are going to do this, just be super careful. Uh, it does a great job, though. So MDF is great for that. I'm also putting a small border around the storage area. And mostly it's just to keep things from sliding out quite as easily. And this is a super duper simple, uh, just three quarter inch MDF sort of square frame. The only trouble with it being straight pieces of MDF is the sides are curved. So how do I get around that? I'm not going to curf uh, K-E-R-F <laughs> this one here. Instead, I'm just going to use a three-quarter inch router bit with, it's a straight cutter with a bearing at the bottom, and I'm going to use the curved sides as a guide. So this is much easier and much simpler. Uh, I'm, there are other ways to do it, but I, I thought it was this was just the like I said, it was just uh, super simple. There's really no setup to this. So uh, quick job. And you can see when it's finished, the curve matches perfectly. And with those sides all attached, you can see the lip that's created. And again, that's just there to help keep things inside, keep them from sliding out. So with all that done, the build for the bottom portion of this project is finished. And I got to go back to the top where the monitor or the, the tablet is being attached. So what I've done is I cut another piece of MDF that's just a little bit bigger than the hole. And you can see that the picture frame again, but there's a, there was a big hole in the middle and I put a piece of MDF underneath that. I wanted that gap to allow for the wire that the monitor or the, the tablet is gonna use. I wanted some space for the wire. I also routed out a little bit of a depth there. You can see right there, I routed an area out just to make sure I had lots of room for the wire. So once the assembly is finished and the glue is dry, I just filled all the holes, all the nail holes, and gave it a quick sand so that I could be ready for primer, which is what you can see me spraying here. I am spraying a lacquer-based primer. It's the primer I use for almost all my MDF projects. And I'm using a, uh, a finish I've never used before. The top coat is, is Plasti Dip. I've never used Plasti Dip before. I don't know how it reacts to MDF. So I wanted to make sure I put uh, a solid primer coat or pr primer base on. So I'm putting two full coats. This is the second coat you can see me spraying here. And I'm using my HVLP gun. It's by AccuSpray. It's a, it's a good quality gun. And again, it, it was just there just to make sure that I got a good adhesion with that uh, Plasti Dip. Now I just mentioned Plasti Dip. And this part here, the part I just uh, touched, that is the part of the center console that I wanted the Plasti Dip to kind of match. So it's a, it feels like rubber and it's kind of a, a, a flat black. And I thought Plasti Dip, well, I mean, I think it is basically a rubber spray and it does dry relatively flat. So this is me spraying the second coat. I do apologize. I missed the first coat. I forgot to film it, but I applied two coats. And one thing I'll note about Plasti Dip from my first experience, this is my only experience with it, it seems to like heavy coats better. I tried a light coat first, but it ended up being heavy orange peel. So I put it on heavy. Uh, you want to make sure you're not getting runs, but I put it on heavy first. The insert is the only part of this project that I'm not spraying black. And I did that because the factory trim is, is sort of a silver color. So this is actually the same silver that I used for my wheels. And the inside of that silver insert is actually uh, going to be covered in flocking. Flocking is, it's like a, uh, it's like suede when it's finished. What I should have done is sprayed the bottom of this black first with a black paint, but um, I goofed on that. But you, you apply this glue, it's a fairly thick glue, and then you squirt on the flocking, and you get a little flocking cannon when you buy it, and it just squirts out, and like I said, it, it ends up looking like a suede when you're finished, very similar to a suede. So you just remove the excess, and, uh, and it's good. You have to get about 24 hours to dry. 
and now it's a little bit of upholstery time. I'm just using, I had some leftover speaker box carpet. Uh, I think it's marine carpet, I think some, some would call it, but I'm just using this. Uh, it's easy, it's easy to work with, and it's durable, and it's applied with contact cement. So you just want to make sure that your contact cement is dry before you apply it. It always works best if it's dry. If it's wet, it won't stick properly. So I, I carpeted the back, and then as you can see here, I also carpeted the inside, which... Uh, I think just gives it the finished look, which is well, obviously what I'm looking for. With all that paint dry, here is the project in the car. Look at that sexy guy on the screen, eh? Yeah, check it out. Um, so you can see it's very easy to get in, get out, and that's the nice thing. So we can use this on long trips, but it's certainly not going to use on a day-to-day -day basis. But yep, just pops right in. And I mean, I've had it in for about a week now, and it doesn't really move around much at all. So that's good. So that little circular device is a Bluetooth transmitter. It's connected via mini plug to the audio output of the tablet. And the wire itself is just connected with some hot glue. And that, that area that I routed out earlier that I mentioned, that's where the wire is, is held just to keep it uh, away from the tablet. But you just plug it into the tablet. And as soon as you connect it, you have the option of multiple headphones being connected at one time. That way both my girls can listen to whatever it is they're, you know, whatever show they want to watch or video game they want to play. So again, it just plugs into the tablet, squeezes in no problem, and it also pulls out just like the iPad mini wall mount, nice and easy. And here you can see the finished project. And again, I think it turned out pretty well. It is a, uh, you know, I think it's going to be really good on long trips. Hey, thanks very much. I hope you enjoyed the build. I know my kids are going to get a lot of fun and a lot of use out of this, uh, this tablet mount. So Thank you very much again for watching. Please like and subscribe on the video. Any questions you have, please ask them down below and I'll get to them as soon as I can. Thanks very much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.